Have you ever wondered why it's crucial to know the genetic history of parents to predict offspring, and how crosses can introduce significant variability or even severe damage to new generations and the future of your breeding stock? To understand it better, pay attention to the following concrete and easy-to-understand example, which illustrates the importance of genetic history and how a recessive gene can reappear in future generations. Imagine you have a beautiful rooster, strong and normal-sized. We'll call him Goliath, because that was the name of a beautiful rooster I once had. He is imposing and perfect for your breeding program. His chicks are born large and healthy, and everything seems to be going well. But one day when you cross him with a hen you borrowed, surprise! Some of his offspring, your new chicks, start to show dwarfism. They are significantly smaller and lighter than normal. What happened? This is where genetic history is crucial. It turns out that Goliath's mother, your beautiful large rooster's mother, and therefore his maternal grandmother did have dwarfism. Dwarfism in chickens is a recessive trait. This means that a bird needs to inherit two copies of this dwarfism gene, one from each parent, to show the characteristic. So the beautiful Goliath was a silent carrier. Goliath's mother passed one copy of the dwarfism gene to him. But since Goliath's father did not have that gene, or only passed on the normal version, Goliath only inherited one copy of the recessive gene. By also having a copy of the normal dominant gene, Goliath did not express dwarfism. He was large and strong, but a silent carrier of that recessive gene. When Goliath, our carrier, was crossed with that borrowed hen, what happened? Most likely, that hen was also a silent carrier of the dwarfism gene, even though she herself was normal-sized. When two carriers are crossed, there is a 25% probability for each chick to inherit two copies of the recessive gene, one from Goliath and one from the hen, and thus express dwarfism. If measures are not taken to eliminate this recessive gene from your breeding line, the problem will continue and could worsen. If the dwarf chicks are not destined for production and are kept as breeders, and if the normal-sized chicks, but which could be carriers like Goliath, are used for breeding, the dwarfism gene will continue to circulate. Imagine that one of those normal chicks, which is in fact a carrier, crosses with another hen that is also a carrier. Again, you will have a 25% chance that their offspring, your grandchildren, will be born with dwarfism. The great danger is that silent carriers are difficult to identify with the naked eye. They can appear perfect and healthy, and continue to transmit the gene to the next generation. This means that the problem can spread throughout your farm without you realizing it until an unfortunate cross between two carriers reappears. For that reason, in this Chapter 3 of our Basic Poultry Genetics course, we are going to talk about how important it is to know the genetic history of the parents to predict offspring, and how this knowledge can improve new generations of chicks with better hybrid vigor. Remember that this course already has two previous chapters, and they have been a total success. And best of all, it's completely free. If you want to watch those two chapters, I'll leave the links in the description of this video. For centuries, chicken breeding was like a black box. I remember many years ago how breeders would observe their birds, cross the ones they thought were best, and wait to see what came out. It's worth noting that this method is still used in many countries. It was an art based on experience and a clinical eye, full of intuition and, often, surprises. But the arrival of genetics, thanks to figures like Mendel and the discovery of the DNA structure, changed everything. Suddenly, that black box opened. What was once a mystery, we could now begin to understand, predict, and, most excitingly, mold it. Today, poultry farming is a precise science, where genetic knowledge is the key to success. Before delving into how genetics works and how to know the history of the birds we want to cross, it is crucial to understand the difference between some key terms that often confuse many new breeders. We refer to the definition of purebred, hybrids, and crossbreeds. Let's start with purebreds. These are chickens that, for generations, have been bred and selected to maintain very specific and stable characteristics, both in their appearance, size, plumage color, comb, and in their production, number of eggs, meat quality. When you cross two individuals of the same purebred, you more or less know what to expect from their offspring because their genes are very predictable. Classic examples are the Leghorn, famous for its white eggs, or the Plymouth Rock, known for its dual purpose. Now let's look at what a hybrid variety is. Here we enter the field of genetics applied to the industry. A hybrid is the result of a deliberate and controlled cross between two or more different genetic lines or purebreds, specifically chosen to combine their best qualities. For example, crossing a Rhode Island Red Rooster and a barred Plymouth Rock Hen to produce Black Star hybrid chickens. The goal is to leverage a phenomenon called heterosis, or hybrid vigor, which we all already know, where the offspring surpass the average of their parents in key characteristics such as growth, egg production, or disease resistance. Commercial laying hens, or broiler chickens you find in the supermarket are, for the most part, hybrids, designed for astonishing efficiency. Finally, we have the crossbreed variety. This term refers to more informal or even accidental crosses, where there is no strict genetic selection of the parental lines. 
The result is greater variability in the offspring. You could get very different chickens from each other with less uniform and predictable characteristics. A cross between a native rooster and a hen of undefined breed would be a typical example of a crossbreed. Genetics speaks why the history of parents is your crystal ball. For any breeder, whether just starting with poultry breeding or more experienced, you should know that understanding the genetic history of the parents is like having a crystal ball to know the possible productive and physical characteristics of the offspring. This is vital for several reasons. First, we have the prediction of desirable traits, and also undesirable traits. Each hen is a package of genes that define its characteristics, such as how many eggs it will lay in its entire productive life, how fast it will grow or sexually mature, its size, the color of its feathers, or even its temperament. If you know the family tree and the performance of the parents and their ancestors, you can anticipate which traits are most likely to be passed on to the offspring. If your breeders come from lines with high egg production, it is very likely that their offspring will also be good layers. But beware! You can also foresee the appearance of undesirable traits, such as health or developmental problems. Some traits are dominant. They are visible to the naked eye if the gene is present, while others are recessive. They need two copies of the gene to manifest, one from each parent. Without knowing the genetic history, you could cross two seemingly healthy birds that, however, carry a recessive gene for a disease or a defect. The result could be offspring with problems. Knowledge allows you to avoid these unpleasant surprises. The test cross, a homemade genetic test to unveil secrets. Sometimes, we don't have access to high-tech laboratories to analyze the DNA of our birds. But what if you suspect that one of your hens, or that imposing rooster, is a silent carrier of an undesirable recessive gene, like the dwarfism we saw with Goliath? This is where the test cross comes into play, a practical and more accessible tool for the home breeder. How does it work? If you suspect a bird is a carrier, you can cross it with a bird that does show the recessive trait. For example, a dwarf hen if you have one, or one you already know is a carrier. If your suspicious bird is truly a carrier of the recessive gene, crossing it with a bird that already expresses it drastically increases the chances that the offspring will also show it. What does it reveal? If the chicks from this cross begin to show the undesirable trait, like dwarfism, you confirm that your suspicious bird is, in fact, a carrier of the recessive gene. If, on the other hand, you don't see the trait in the offspring of several hatches, it's less likely to be a carrier. It's limitations. It's important to clarify that this method is slower, as you have to wait for the chicks to hatch and grow. Additionally, it requires space to perform the cross and may not be 100% foolproof if the number of offspring is low. However, it is a valuable empirical tool that breeders have used for a long time, even before modern genetic tests existed. This homemade test contrasts with the current availability of commercial DNA tests which are much more accurate and faster for identifying specific genes. These tests are excellent, but may be less accessible to all breeders. Therefore, the test cross remains an alternative for those who want to investigate the genetics of their flock with the resources at their disposal. Do you want bigger chickens, that lay more eggs, or that are more resistant? I've always wanted that. Then you should know that hybrid vigor is your ally to achieve these characteristics. When you cross different or unrelated breeds or genetic lines, the offspring, the resulting hybrids, often outperform the average of their parents in performance. This phenomenon is the basis of modern commercial poultry farming. Knowing which parental lines to use allows you to maximize this vigor. For this reason, if we have, for example, a Rhode Island red rooster whose egg production levels range from 200 to 250 eggs per year, and we cross it with a barred Plymouth Rock hen whose egg production levels also range from 200 to 250 eggs per year, by combining these two breeds thanks to the hybrid vigor between the cross of two highly productive breeds, we obtain a hybrid hen whose egg production ranges from 280 to 300 eggs per year, which is the black star. Imagine crossing two closely related individuals, for example, a pair of sibling chickens. This is called inbreeding or closed endogamy. Although it can be used to fix specific characteristics if done knowingly, if overused, it can be detrimental. It increases the probability that the offspring will inherit two copies of undesirable recessive genes, which can lead to lower fertility, lower chick viability, growth problems, and even greater susceptibility to diseases. Knowing the genetic history is key to avoiding this risk and maintaining the health of your flock of chickens at home or on the farm. For any genetic improvement program, parental information is pure gold. It allows estimating the genetic value of a bird and predicting the superiority of its offspring. This means making informed decisions for the future of your farm, selecting the best breeders for the next generations. The Laboratory of Nature – How Crosses Create Variability Crosses do not just combine existing genes. They are true engines of genetic variability, meaning they create diversity in the new offspring. 
This is how they achieve this reorganization of genes to form new productive characteristics. When a sperm and an egg unite, each contributes half of the future chick's DNA. If the parents have different genotypes, the resulting combination in the offspring is unique, creating an individual with a genetic mix that did not exist before in a single body. This is called hybrid vigor, and is what we should seek in our crosses. This is a fascinating process that occurs during the formation of eggs and sperm. Chromosomes, which are like packages of genes, exchange small segments of DNA. It's like shuffling and cutting the genetic cards of the parents, creating new sequences and combinations of genes in each gamete. Imagine that each chromosome is a book full of genetic stories. When gametes are formed, these books are distributed independently. The inheritance of a gene in one book does not affect that of another gene in a different book. This random distribution exponentially increases the possible genetic combinations in the offspring. By crossing a breed or line that does not have certain genes with another that does, you introduce these fresh genes into your population. This is incredibly useful for incorporating desirable characteristics that were not present, such as greater resistance to a specific disease, or the ability to adapt to extreme climates. Modern poultry farming is a testament to the power of crosses. The strains of laying hens that produce hundreds of eggs a year, or broiler chickens that grow at astonishing speed, are the result of complex crossbreeding and selection programs over decades. New genetic combinations are constantly sought to maximize productivity and efficiency. The most compelling proof of the importance of genetics in poultry farming is seen in industry results. For example, modern broiler chickens, such as the Ross 308 or Cobb 500 lines, grow from 40 grams to over 2 kilograms in just 40 days, with astonishing feed efficiency. This is not magic. It is the result of decades of intensive genetic selection and strategic crosses. The same applies to laying hens, which went from laying about 60 to 80 eggs a year a century ago to over 300 eggs annually today, thanks to the careful combination of genes from different breeds and lines. These achievements demonstrate how genetic knowledge has transformed poultry farming into a globally efficient industry. From the earliest days when man domesticated the wild fowl, to modern genetics laboratories, the history of the chicken is the history of selection. Every egg we collect, every chicken that grows on our farm is a testament to thousands of years of evolution and, more recently, to the precise science of genetics. Knowing the history of the parents is not just knowing where they come from, it is having the power to write the future of our birds. It is understanding that each cross is a brushstroke on the genetic canvas, each breeding decision, an opportunity to create stronger, more productive, and more resilient generations. The future of your chicken coop, the future of poultry farming, is not a matter of luck, it's a matter of genetics. And now, you have the tools to unlock it. If you found this video useful and interesting, don't keep this knowledge to yourself. Give us a like to support us, and help us reach more bird lovers. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos, and activate the notification bell so YouTube notifies you every time we upload new content. Do you have any questions, an experience to share, or any doubts about what we talked about today? Leave us your comment below. We love reading and answering your questions. And if you want to delve even deeper into this fascinating world, remember that in the video description you will find links to the two previous chapters of this basic poultry genetics course. Don't miss them for a complete overview. Share this video on your social media and with your fellow breeders. Together, we can help more people understand the incredible power of poultry genetics. To your success, fellow breeder, until next time.